Hey guys, so this is number 22 in the series. It's called King Jesus. It was given on 11 21 23 at 6 a.m. 600 in the Hebrew is um, a face, and it was only used in Daniel 2 46 and 3 19. And those two verses, if you look them up, they contrast a face in humility and a face in rage. So I think that's a little interesting. And then um, in the Greek, it means to restore or to give back to its original position, to be separated from and to have a definite standing, to enjoy again something that is taken away by destruction, to reestablish, emphasizing a separation from the former negative influence. Mark 18.25 is where this is used, and it's talking about the restoration of the kingdom. So this is very fitting. I'm going to get started. So King Jesus, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Service to the king is required. Service to the king is requested. King Jesus, King Jesus is prepared. King Jesus is waiting to rule. King Jesus knows your name. King Jesus calls. King Jesus is worthy of all praise. King Jesus calls his own. The faithful who love him. The ones who cry out to him. Those who use his name in prayer. King Jesus knows each one individually. He has made each one of his a home of their own in heaven. King Jesus knows and cares for each one, every detail. King Jesus is filled with love, compassion, and kindness for his own. His gentle concern for a person and the state of their soul is very detailed and forgiving. Because of his time on earth, he has much compassion on how hard it is to have the human struggles. He knows pain and conflict. He knows the struggles of growing up with temptations to sin. He understands emotions and is overwhelmed with gentle concern for you and all you go through as a human being. The people of his time were definitely affected by his peaceful nature. People were and still are drawn to him. He is love. He is forgiveness. He is healing. King Jesus will be an excellent ruler. Imagine a king who cares deeply for each person and their soul who he rules over. Imagine a king who cares for each individual person for their emotional health, spiritual health, and physical health. Imagine a king that would rule with these things as central to his leadership. Imagine a king with love and compassion toward every person under him. This will be so for a thousand years. He will rule with love and kindness. He will rule with godly authority. He will gently but firmly rule with godly law. Society will reflect this leadership. They will rest in peace. They will have joy between each other instead of competition. There will be no child overlooked. No person or child left alone without care. Each household will be love, kindness, and joy. The earth will bring an end to harming, for no evils will be ruling only King Jesus. Take a minute and think of all the dissatisfaction, war, theft, evils, and conflict that are all products of carnal man that occur because people are being selfish, evil, or want power. Now imagine a whole world without any of this. It may sound like a fantasy, but it's reality. A reality that is not far off. In heaven, we rejoice for the great rule of King Jesus is so very close. We celebrate how humanity will act when led properly and when purified. In the thousand year reign, there is living water that flows from the throne of Jerusalem to the east and to the west. It is pure and holy. Everything it touches 
it will heal, restore, and help that person, plant, animal, or land to be healed and holy. Each month, the trees that line this river will give fruit. The fruits will heal and nourish all of the people. The leaves will be as medicine. These two, the holy river and the holy fruit trees, and a non-conflicted life will give all the humanity that partakes of these a very long, healthy, happy life. These people will be taught by the word, Jesus himself. He will impart my wisdom. He will explain the scriptures. He will celebrate the heroes of the faith who prayed for others in the wars and tribulation. He will evaluate the humble who helped others find him. He, he will elevate the humble who helped others find him. He will bring to the front those who were made fun of or persecuted or killed for his name's sake. The quiet and faithful, he will celebrate their consistency without need of others, just seeking him. He will point out as an example those that suffered with full faith and joy. He will bring forth those who spent hours in the scriptures because they had a need to know evermore and him and the Father. Unlikely people will be brought forward to lead with him. They will be rich in love, faith, and well-versed in the Bible and rich in God's wisdom. In this kingdom, which is clearly a very different which is clearly very different from the world you exist in now, which is based in selfishness, carnality, power, and hatred. In this kingdom, people will flourish. They will willfully share. Society will function with each person giving freely of what they each can share with the group from the products of their hands or farm or giftings. All homes will be open for visitors and the sharing of meals. All families will be safe, so it will be safe to allow children to go in and learn or play with no concerns. No child abused, no child spoken to harshly, no child with illness. All people, regardless of age, will get along and treat one another with love. Imagine this. It is right around the corner. The anointed will leave. Bombs will fall and the obedient faithful will be protected for within the provisions they will be my witnesses. There will be a false peace and many will come to me. A false messiah will also be elevated in the world. A choice will have to be made. Jesus is the true messiah and my one and only son and I am the one true God or the false messiah the one the kings promote, who will have a deceptively keen presentation that will fool all who have not found me, as well as those Christians who do not seek to know me. The rapture will occur. A great darkness will fall over the earth as my people who embody my love, my light, my Holy Spirit will be gone. Evil will merge with darkness and wickedness and torments will begin for all who are left on the earth in darkness. Some will cry out to me, and I will send elite rescue teams to bring them to safety and learn of me. The kings will have brought in the Antichrist, who will be promoted by the false messiah. The Antichrist will rule and demand all on earth get his mark and worship him. After he reigns for a short time, and brings a society of pure evil to lead the world. Then Jesus will come for war, bringing his saints. They will quickly defeat the Antichrist and his armies. When the world is rid of evil, then Jesus will gather his people and restore the land and have his kingly reign for a thousand years. The contrast from the most evil kingdom of all of human history in the form of the Antichrist indwelled with the adversary and Jesus, the King of love, compassion and all truth will be astounding. The true contrast of all darkness versus all light. 
Rejoice if you choose Jesus. This will be amazing. This will be an amazing time to exist on the earth. Come to Jesus. He loves you. He cares for you. He longs to see you healed and loved. He longs to see you in a joyful and kind world where creation and the residents of his city are as I intended them to be before the fall of man in Eden. Come and see. Experience it. Be part of the millennial reign of Jesus. And then this particular piece ended at 8.08 a.m. So in the Hebrew, that is foundation. So if you have Jesus, you have the foundation. And then in the Greek, it is um, means shame. So if you don't have Jesus, you will be in shame. So that is very interesting timing. Here are the verses addressed in this 22nd lesson. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born. And for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. John nineteen seventeen to 21, and then down to 30, and then 33 to 37. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but he said, I am the King of the Jews. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. But then they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Hebrews 4, 13 to 16. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him who we must give, to whom we must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. John twelve twenty six. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. 1 Thessalonians four sixteen to 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Revelation thirteen fifteen to 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Revelation 19, 19 to 21. And I saw the beast 
the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of burning fire with brimstone, and the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Revelation 20, 4-6 And I saw thrones and sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and Christ, and they shall reign with him a thousand years. Zechariah 8, 4 through 5 and 7 through 8. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with a staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. And then Zechariah fourteen eight through 9 and 20. And in that day it shall be that the living waters shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea and half of them toward the western sea. In both summer and winter it shall occur. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day it shall be the Lord is one and his name one. In that day holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. That's it for this one, and I'll see you next time.